I have insurance and so I don't need to focus on anything else other than just my physical well-being because a bike is completely replaceable and the fact that you have insurance and that you're protected and you're covered all you need to do is focus on yourself and getting yourself better like I'm gonna try and I'm gonna take risks and I'm gonna take chances because why else why would you not right I'm Alicia Speak I'm 37 I'm a full-time lawyer but I'm also a cyclist for Cycle Team London not only because of her wonderfully aggressive racing that gives me goosebumps every time I watch, but also for her post-race interviews, which have become almost as famous as her racing itself. If you haven't seen what I'm talking about, where have you been? But have a look at this. Tell me, tell me all about the final. Ooh. <laughs> Well, it was a hard one. Um, started from, yeah, actually Canaryback. Then it was, you know, a little bit stop and go, stop and go. And then we knew that coming, you know, into Hot Hunt, you know, it would be one line. It would be, you know, really hard. And it was. And a little bit counterattack and stop and go. And then one group go, gone. And then we knew ugh, on Quaraman things would really you know happen and then it was just going full gas into the Quaraman and then bam let's put the hammer down and then you know we tried and it was fun like it was super much fun and you know people screaming on the side like ah! you know and you know you, you just feel that energy you know you just suck it all in and you're like yeah they're cheering for me you know <laughs> not especially because they are cheering for me but it was it was super cool like I just enjoyed that energy this race has like so many spectators it's crazy and you know this finish line is just ah oh, you can see it from far 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 and you just go and you're like and then we looked back, you know, and they were coming full gas from the back. And we were just like, ah, shit, 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 you know, trying to, fuck, they can't go, they can't come, they can't come, ah. Oh. And then, yeah, I, I mean, I was a dead fish at the end. But, you know, it was cool, and I really, I really enjoyed today. So we have a happy dead fish. <laughs> yeah, a happy dead fish. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, put the hammer down! Cecily at your blue thing! Oh, Cecily, I can never get tired of that. I was there, I was at the Tour of Flanders. We did an interview with you just after that. And just watching it makes me so happy. It makes me want to celebrate the sport. It's wonderful. Do you get tired of watching that back? I don't know. It, it, it gives me a smile yeah. because uh, it, was a, it was a good day. And um, yeah, I had lots of fun. And also, you know, you know, you can't remember while you stand there. You just, you know, you're in the world. So, you know, you just explain. And then afterwards, you're like, ah, I was pretty, pretty hyped there. <laughs> but uh, it's good. What is that? Is that pure Cecily at Triple Big? Is that the adrenaline of the racing? Is that, I guess, knowing as well that it's good to put on a bit of a show to sell this sport to the wider world? Mm, I don't think of it as, oh, now, you know, I need to perform or I need to put on a show. It's like, yeah, I think everyone who knows me knows that I'm a bit of a crazy banana. So... Crazy banana. Yeah, I mean, it just, uh, it comes, um, you know, if you, if you have a good day and you feel it, then I guess it, yeah, and you're happy. I mean, because the interviews after a shit race, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should point out you just finished third at the Tour of Flanders, so it was quite a big day for you regardless. Um, when I interview riders after a race, I feel that you can always, you can tell a lot about them, even, even when they're in the depths of, of suffering still, and you can see a little bit about how they experience a race. And I'm thinking back to when um, I interviewed you after um, La Course last year, um, where were we? The top of goodness, I can't even remember. Um, big climb, anyway. Mm. Um, Col it no. was after Isabel next year. Uh, Anybody help? Where was La Course last year? Where did we finish? Where? La Merci, Seb. He's on it. Um, anyway, <laughs> you were um, on your knees. Uh, literally, <laughs> yeah. and in tears, and you were conveying such an emotion from your day in the saddle that I think anyone watching that, you could not feel but to be transported along with you in that journey. 
Do you feel all of those intense emotions as you're riding? Because that must be exhausting. No, it was more like, you know, at that um, day, you know, you sit down afterwards and you're like, and then it, you f it's like a flash, you know? You're like, fuck, that <laughs> was... <laughs> That was a cool race, you know? And then you start, you know, because um, last year I had a really tough spring and nothing was really working out for me. And then, you know, you have this moment where everything just goes the way you want and then you finally find your legs back, you know? So it's a combination and then it comes out and you're like, oh my God. And then I remember me being a crying princess, you know, sitting there, <laughs> this is so <laughs> great, you know, being fourth or... But we, we had a podium with Ashley, so... You had a podium with Ashley, but you were also out front for a lot of the climb, you know? And, and I remember you saying just how special it was to have people cheering your name, to know who you were, to be celebrating you on this, on this fantastic climb in this wonderful stage. Do you look back on that day with particular affection, do you think? Oh yeah, big time. And also, like you say, because people on the side, there were so many people on the climb and we're not used to that many people um, at races. So, you know, when we experience these crowds, it's like, yes. And when people then know my name and, and also with Danish flags and or then you just, you know, you get in the mood and then you just, <gasps> they know me. And then, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just, that's really cool. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I get a bit of extra motivation from, um, from that. You're becoming quite a star in Denmark these days, aren't you? Beyond the cycling world. I don't know. Oh, you are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> aren't you on television and you're, you're, you're becoming better known, I guess, beyond cycling. Do you enjoy that bit of it? I guess it's um, part of it, um, but you know, I, I also like to be known as, oh, she's a good cyclist, you know, oh, she's, she, she dares, she has balls, you know, she goes out there and she attacks and she's oh, cool um, in her way of racing. Um, so yeah, that's what I like to be known for. And yeah, then I am a bit, oh, whoa, so <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the first thing I said about you on this stage was that it's, it's your aggressive racing that I admire the most. And I love it. I love watching you in a race because I know we're going to get fireworks at some stage, you know, and, and, and I think that that's really important for the sport. But it's just, imp it's just wonderful to watch. Where does that come from? Is that a natural instinct in your racer's instinct that you maybe have to control? Is that something you work on? Where, where does that aggression come from? I, I think I just like that, you know, racing hard and you know, watching the others and they're, you know, watching it, them suffering. They're, yeah, mm. they're in pain. Yeah, I'm also suffering. <laughs> but, you know, I like that kind of racing and I like attacking. And uh, I think, yeah, um, that's why I, I do it. And I think that's also what I'm best at, you know, going out there and when I can follow the rest. What got you into the sport to begin with? Why did you start riding your bike? Ooh, um, I was a swimmer, but then I felt really bad every time I was in the water, and that's not good when you're a swimmer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I tried every other sport that you can think of, but um, yeah, nothing really catched my attention. And um, then the local cycling club had um, an article in the local newspaper that uh, they had 90th birthday, so they invited people to come um, and have a chat, and I thought, hmm, why not? Um, so yeah, uh, then I was down there and ever since I've, I've been cycling. And I think between you and me, <laughs> um, I think it's, it's also because, you know, they were like, oh, there's a woman or there's a, there's a girl coming, we need to keep her, you know? So then, uh, you know, we, um, I, I obviously, I borrowed a bike the first time. So um, when there was something wrong with the gears or whatever, you know, every guy would be standing and trying to, you know, figure out how to, how to fix this. And I was just like, oh, wow, they're all <laughs> helping me, you know? <laughs> and then, yeah, but it, and, and obviously, the more you cycle, the more you fall in love with the sport. Do you love it as much today as you did when you, when you first started out? Do you still love the sport and riding and racing and, and everything that comes with professional riding? I love it even more. I mean, also because, yeah, in the beginning, you know, you're outside and uh, you're fresh air and, and the, depending on where you go to in the world, you have different landscapes. 
But now, also with the racing, you know, you can, there's so many aspects you can get better at. Or you can um, get better at the tactic side um, or tactical side and, and get better at cornering, get better at descending. Like, there's so many, um, and obviously get in better shape. So there's so many things that uh, you can get better at. And I think that's the beauty of cycling. What did you get right then in 2019? What are your fondest memories of this year? You were third at Flanders, third at La Course. It was a great year for you. What, what do you think you got right? Mm, good question. I don't know. I think, yeah, I, the highlights are the spring. I think it was really, but I love the spring classics. Um, and uh, yeah, then not such a good Giro. Um, Not but much that. no, <laughs> um, and then yeah, but La Course afterwards was so cool. But that's also a race I, I really love, um, and uh, yeah, and then the the World Championships. I just need that bit extra to uh, to be able to. But I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. So during this winter, <laughs> we're gonna train some <laughs> hard. So what about La Course then? Because the theme of our discussions at the Ruler. Classic theatre this year is a Grand Tours. Um, I guess the Giro Rosa is is a Grand Tour in women's cycling, but we don't have the equivalent. We do not have a three week race. And every year, when it comes to La Course, there's as much discussion about the lack of a women's Tour de France as there is about the racing itself. Where do you stand on that? Where do you stand on on a women's Tour de France and whether we should have one or not? I think uh, it would be really cool for us to have. I don't think it's necessary to have a three-week long uh, Tour de France, um, but it would be, I mean, to have a stage race on such a big um, scene as the Tour de France is, and you see how um, when it is on TV, like the whole world, and everyone is watching, you know, so that could be a really good boost for women cycling to be able to have, let's say, a week or, um, because it's also, it's a, it's a mix because three weeks is also long when we compare to that, um, the teams mm -hmm. are also smaller, like the men's, I don't know, have 30 riders in a team and, and we have maybe 12 riders and some are injured and, you know, so it's also about finding riders and also about salary. But I mean, women's cycling is moving in the right direction, um, but I don't think we are ready for a three week, um, and I don't think it's necessary, as I said, but yeah, it would be good to have a week on such a big scene as the Tour de France is. How does it compare riding those kinds of races? You say about the crowd, and we, and we saw in that interview, how, you know, the, the energy, as you kept saying, that you got from the crowd at the Tour of Flanders, it's one of the races that, that does it incredibly well when they're staging a men's and a women's race together. How does that compare when you're riding a, a women's version of a men's race compared to a women's standalone? I mean, yeah, obviously there's more people out watching um, often. That's the case um, when there's a, when the men are coming, you know, a couple of hours later, then yeah, they, they see uh, the women as well. And that, you know, that give, that's super cool with the, with the energy that it gives because there are spectators. So. Personally, I love when there's lots of people out on the road cheering and, you know, having a party, like ha having a, a blast um, of just, you know, having a beer and watching some cycli cyclists going by, you know. Because um, you must feed off that, do you, while you're riding? Yeah. And, and you know, especially the Flanders, you know, with, with Pattersburg, it's just Oh my God! And you, you know, go into Pattersburg, and you know, you just smell sausage and beer, and but and then you can't. The last thing you want to smell when you're racing, yeah, but you, and you can't hear yourself think, you know, because people are just screaming, and and but you know, that's also the the cool stuff, you know, because they lift you. Everyone's laughing because I don't know if you can see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that taken? I, don't rem I, don't, I haven't seen that picture before. <sighs> I think that was also where I found out that uh, I was among the, the 20 riders that got onto the... Um, onto the second stage of La Course, yeah. is it, well, two years ago. What would you like to see with La Course then? How do you think that's going? We used to have the one-day race around Paris. It's changed up the last couple of years. How do you think it's going? Yeah, I think it's it's sad that um, we're going to a criterium now um, because there's no, um, I mean, in the men's world to Canada, there's no criteriums there. Um, and it it's probably not going to be 
such a super show as we can see out in the mountains or if we got, you know, some stages. So yeah, I think it's a pity um, that it's on, on shang tzu and just a criterion. And I would love to see that we got, uh, I mean, just let's say a three-day uh, stage race, you know, just a flat one and a mountain one and then, yeah, a time trial, for example, like to, to, to do that and to, to, so that we could see it's also developing and, and we need people to invest in women's cycling. Maybe it's not paying off like right away, but you know, with time, because women's cycling is getting more and more popular. And I think that we can say that women's cycling is just as exciting as the men's race. So we cross fingers. Um, and I think all cycling fans have an opinion on, on what needs to be done to improve the sport and to, to give it a greater platform and to give it greater exposure. What do you think is the most important thing moving forward with the sport to advance it in any way? Um, I think there's many things. I mean, obviously, we need to get out in the living rooms. I mean, so we, we need TV. Um, and yeah, for, for developing sport, it's also good with the World Tour next year because then we'll start with minimum salaries, you know? So we are getting there, small steps, but, um, but it's the right way that, uh, that we are moving. And minimum salary, I guess, was even controversial in itself because some teams were saying that the sport wasn't ready for it. But you think that that, that is a good thing. We have to force that to begin with, at least. I don't know if we have to force it, but yeah, it, I think it's a good thing. And I think that uh, we've seen that eight teams have applied for, for a World Tour license. And we see that they have um, sponsors or partners that are ready to invest for a four-year period, as is Francis de Chaux, that I'm writing for next year ready for investing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's, uh, that's, that's really good. Um, yeah, and shows that uh, there are getting more and more money into women's cycling and or more and more sponsors want to, to commit into women's cycling. I like how you're trying to keep me in my place here, trying to team me up. You didn't need to. I was going to ask you about next year in Francaise Dijon. What about the team change? It's exciting. <laughs> You've been at Bigler for three years. Um, all change next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm excited about it. I mean, it's going to be a new environment, and I think it's a, it's a good place for me to, to grow because, you know, to be honest, I think I've just begun my, uh, my cycling career. So, you know, I, I, I want to learn more, and I want to become better, and I still believe I have a bit to, you know, to be there, be there. You know, I mean, I'm slowly, you know, step by step, year by year, getting, but I need that little extra. So, um, yeah, I hope that uh, that Francis Show will be the right platform for me to do that. Well, what about next year then, 2020? What are the big goals? Ooh, next year is Olympic yeah. year. So, crossing fingers that uh, I can represent Denmark at, uh, at Tokyo. Um, do you like the course? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it mm -hmm with my eyes, but yeah, uh, I mean, it it, uh, it looks cool. I think it's a bit sad, again, that um, the woman doesn't get um, the extraordinary things, like, because everyone are talking about the men's race and they're going over Mount Fuji and, um, you know, and, and, and we, we don't get that. So it's always, and that's also, I've also been writing a blog about that, I think a couple of years ago, that it's a pity that, um, that every time there is something extraordinary. And I don't mind if it's, ah, uh, because you know, some people say, oh, you just want all the mountains because you're a climber. And you know, it's not because uh, I, I just want mountains. It's, I want that extraordinary thing that the TV producers, you know, talk about and that the media talk about. Even in Qatar, when it was um, flat as a pancake, the men was in the desert and, you know, everyone was talking about, oh, the desert, and it was just split it into atoms because of the crosswind. But the women got, you know, a little circle. So no one talked about that. So, you know, we also want that extraordinary thing that other people talk about or that the media f talk about. Cecily, how do we do that? You know, because I think the fans want that, don't we? Everyone wants something spectacular. The riders want it, the teams want it, journalists want it. How do we achieve that then? Just keep shouting about it? What needs to happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know it's a small drop in the ocean, but to, that we talk about it and yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a step of the way. Um, and yeah, just 
more and more people making people or making the organizers and the UCI aware that this is what we want. You know, we, we also want the, the extra no or anything. And it's not because our uterus drops, you know, when we get, um, and we can Above do that as well. <laughs> yeah, but see, like, oh, we want to do it as well. Is that it then? Do you think we're still stuck in an age where the people who decide these courses think the women can't handle it? Re like, are we really mm. facing that? Do Sometimes I feel that, mm, yeah, it's a shame. They need to watch you race. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Because it's, uh, I mean, we can race. Mm. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of good examples that, uh, that where we really put on a great show. And so, Olympics a goal, what about the Spring Classics then? You came mm. third in mm. Flanders last year. Do you feel that that first place is within your grasp? Well, it is within your grasp, clearly. But which of those races would you like to be crossing the line and wowing us again with those post-race interviews? Oh, um, Flanders is close to my heart. Um, but, you know, a race like Strade Bianche is also, you know, one of the races that's just, oh, and going into Siena and oh, um, so, yeah, I, I guess a lot of the spring classics will be, um, yeah, close to my heart and, and, and I want to try and, and go for it this year. I mean, I, I, need, I need a victory. Yeah, I think you'll have a lot of support for that. What do we think? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Cecilia Triplett-Vig. Thank you. Thanks. You're awesome. <laughs>